Africa is one of the world's seven continents. It's so large, it makes up nearly a quarter of the world's landmass. It stretches from the Mediterranean Sea to the north, all the way down to the Indian Ocean to the south. Africa is host to the most extensive wildlife show on Earth. But what intrigues me most about this indescribable continent is its cultural diversity. There are so many tribes and ethnic and social groups that over 2,000 languages are spoken. There are many names for this phenomenal place. It's called the birthplace of civilization. and the cradle of mankind. It's also called the Forgotten Continent. But Africa is one place you'll never forget. Researchers believe that humans and African apes once had a common ancestor, perhaps as recently as five to 10 million years ago. Today, the continent has more than one billion people. That's more than three times as much as in America. But think about this. Of Africa's one billion people, over 40% are under the age of 15. How does this impact Africa today? and how will it affect it tomorrow? The huge continent is so diverse that not only are there different cultures changing from one country to the next, there are many different cultures within each country. Today, the vast majority of its inhabitants are of indigenous origin. They speak a number of different languages, practice hundreds of distinct religions, and thousands of traditional rituals. Because of its fertile grazing grounds, Africa boasts the highest concentration of predators as well as the largest herds on the planet. The continent's spectacular wildlife, iconic landscapes, and rich cultural traditions make Africa the greatest show on Earth. Getting around Africa is different depending on where you go. The larger bustling city centers, like here in Kigali, have cars, buses, and transit systems, much like you'd find in any big city. But much of Africa is rural, and too many places are underdeveloped, making it more challenging to get around. Animals, like camels, are common and extremely valuable in Northern Africa. <laughs> And where there is water, you'll find various forms of navigation, from traditional fishing boats like here in Accra, to makeshift barges like here outside Bamako. Navigation and transportation need to be creative, and many have to rely on their own two feet and a sturdy animal. Many must transport their goods on old carts or carry the extraordinary loads on their heads. Even some of the poorest Africans don't have cars, or even bikes, but they are proud. Africa boasts some of the planet's most magnificent world heritage sites like the Great Mosque of Genet in Mali, 
This mosque is the largest mud brick or adobe building in the world. In this area during the 11th century, the Dogans fled the advancing Arabs coming from the north and found shelter here. They chose to build their houses on top of the escarpment for protection. And just up the road on the southern edge of the Sahara Desert is another heritage site and mosque in historic Timbuktu, which was a key trading point in the 16th century. Loaded with trade goods, convoys would spend weeks crossing the unforgiving desert to reach Timbuktu. Also in the northern part of Africa, you'll find Kasbahs, mud brick fortress towns built by the Berbers in the hills that used to be the residence of the local leaders. These Kasbahs, like this colorful one here in Morocco, are living history of northern Africa's rich history and tradition. On the tip of South Africa is Robin Island, where Nelson Mandela spent 18 of his 27 prison years in this cell. In Ghana, Ashanti traditional buildings are World Heritage Sites. And so are their forts, which are home to some of the world's most notorious slave castles. Another slave trading center is on the other side of the continent in Stone Time, Zanzibar. The slave trade lasted over 200 years, finally ending in 1833. 20 million slaves were taken, and two-thirds of them died. Many of Africa's World Heritage Sites include geographic regions, like Manyara National Park on the edge of the Great Rift Valley. And the Serengeti Plains, home to the largest herds of grazing animals in the world. The plains are renowned for being the path of the great migration of two million wildebeest. And the Gorongoro Conservation Area, including its spectacular crater. Its floor covers 100 square miles, and there's an estimated 25,000 animals within the crater. Our backyards are where we get together with family, friends, and neighbors. It's our immediate community. And not all backyards are the same. This man in Western Africa is tending his livestock in his backyard. This modest Himba home near Angola has a fence around its backyard to keep out wild animals. Many backyards have homes and families that have little means. And some are poorer still, like this backyard in Cape Flat, South Africa. Some backyards are huge because they extend way out into the plains, like here in Kenya. And throughout Africa, women use their backyards to cook, like this Ovamba woman, whose homestead is called a crawl. This Ghania woman uses her backyard to wash the dishes. And in this case, a bushman in his backyard is trying to heal a sick child. But whether your backyard is large and spacious, or whether you live right in the middle of town where there is little room at all, backyards are where we all gather. Many of the jobs you'll see in Africa are in the fishing industry. More jobs are in agriculture, farming, and raising animals. Others might be at this tannery in Fez, Morocco, where workers collect the hides, clean them, soak them, color them, and dry them. And it smells pretty bad, too. This woman is a school teacher in a small village near the Sahara Desert. Lack of education is a big part of Africa's economic problems. But jobs, never mind good jobs, are hard to find. Africa has one of the highest unemployment rates in the world. 
and in Northern Africa, it's worse still. Of all those without jobs, youth unemployment is the highest. Many parts of Africa are called a ticking time bomb. With the possibility of greater social upheaval due to high levels of youth unemployment. And because of worsening economic conditions, activists and disillusioned youth, particularly in Northern Africa, have even toppled governments. Sadly, many Africans live in poverty and chronic hunger. Many Africans get their food and income from farming small plots of land. The Gates Foundation says that farmers will need to double the amount of food they grow to feed the continent's growing population. But there are many efforts to help these farming families to become self-sufficient and build better lives. Other programs help empower women to improve their economic progress. And some initiatives, such as microloans, help women establish their own means of income, which not only fights poverty, but fights injustice that affect women and their families. Religion in Africa includes a wide variety of beliefs. All of the world's major religions are practiced here. Islam's roots in Africa can be traced to the seventh century. Nearly half of Africa's population is Muslim and most live in the northern third of the continent. This is the Hassan Mosque in Casablanca. It took 35,000 men and over 50 million man hours to complete the construction. It's so large that 20,000 Muslims can pray inside and another 80,000 can worship in the massive courtyard. Muslims and Christians have lived alongside each other for centuries. Here in Ghana, Christianity is uniquely and openly displayed on everything, from the naming of their businesses to the naming of their boats. But Christianity was also at odds with the traditional spirituality of the indigenous people whose beliefs are handed down from generation to generation. Traditional spiritual healers are typically elders who advise the community on moral, social, and even legal matters. This Bushman healer in Southern Africa entered into a meditative trance to connect with his ancestors for strength, advice, and wisdom. Religions such as Christianity and Islam, along with traditional spiritual practices, generally coexist with each other. But sadly, there are also too many areas where there are volatile religious fault lines. Christianity and Islam remain an age-old conflict. Africa's multicultural society has countless tribes and ethnic groups that practice unique customs and rituals. Ceremonies from weddings to funerals are very important in African society and they connect people to their traditions and religions. Face painting is part of every celebration and represents all kinds of symbolism from virtually every kind of ceremony, initiation rite, and competition. The Himba women in northern Namibia cover their bodies in red ochre, which is their sun protector, their makeup, and even an insect repellent. The Himba is one of the world's most intriguing ethnic groups. When young Himba boys and girls enter puberty, they perform a crude ritual of filing their teeth into points. And following their circumcision ceremony, young Maasai boys will spend up to three to four months away from home, traveling across their section of land, learning how to become a man and a warrior. 
Here in Mali, a naming ceremony was performed, a tradition where the village men line up to approve the name of the neighborhood infant. In Northern Africa, as a rite of passage into manhood, a young man will wear an alasho, a turban-like veil. In addition to providing protection from the harsh desert sands, they believe the veil wards off evil spirits. In Kenya and Tanzania, women wear large circular beaded collars and colorful headbands. Both men and women often elongate their earlobes, then they wear heavy earrings and beaded ornaments. The Maasai also perform the jumping dance, where they leap into the air to show their strength and stamina as tribal warriors. And wearing white powder on your face can symbolize a link to the spiritual world. Some Bushmen women, who are not feeling well, might put black herbal cream on their faces to help heal them. Sometimes the amount and detail of a woman's jewelry indicates the bride price required to be paid by her family when she marries. When kids paint their bodies, it's just for fun, like dressing up. And they're also learning courtship rituals. Families are the very heart of African culture and society. Some live in a culture where a man can have more than one wife, and they all live together with all their children. And in other clans, only the chief can have more than one wife. Extended families are the backbone of African communities. They can include parents, siblings, cousins, in-laws, and certainly the grandparents. And more and more nuclear families are growing because of Western influence. African families are very strong and parenting is communal and they are everyone's responsibility, even their children. Marriages can involve all kinds of different customs. Sometimes the brides are given to a man they don't know and could be much older than themselves. Sometimes marriages are arranged by parents when the couple are only kids. Sometimes the groom's family will pay a bride price to the bride's family, which might consist of money, but it could also be sheep or cattle or yams. But one thing you'll see everywhere you go are kids. Young children are everywhere. But the women are central in African culture and are called the mothers of civilization. I remember visiting Africa for the first time. For me, it was truly a life-changing event. Africa introduced me to a world that I had only seen through National Geographic. Never before had I experienced such an unlimited scope of cultures, environments, and animals. And more animals. I became intrigued with unique traditions that for countless generations have defined the continent's distinct cultures. Art, music, and literature are rich areas of importance that support religion and society. Deep-rooted traditions, colorful ceremonial rituals, and spirited celebrations ignite Africa's personality. In America today, the melting pot, the big stew, the jambalaya, is enormously influenced by the extraordinary people from all corners of Africa, including young people who have a pervasive, transformative impact in shaping our own unique and dynamic culture. But even a place as old as Africa is still struggling to find its way. 
Unfortunately, the continent is home to many of the world's most impoverished nations. And tragically, millions risk starvation as a result of famine, corruption, and war. Horrible conflicts both between countries and even within Africa's countries continue throughout the continent. But there is hope. Education is central to addressing all problems. Nelson Mandela said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. And change is happening. For example, women are playing a central role in recreating business, government, and community. It's true that HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria continue to claim the lives of millions. But with the help of the international community, Africa's health issues are beginning to improve. Africans are also learning how to compete for land that must be shared with a very delicate ecosystem and with our precious wild animals. Africans' ability to persevere under challenging conditions is hard enough. But to be kind, friendly, and welcoming, never mind optimistic, are other incredible measures of their character. Africa's very core is defined by family and its ethnic heritage. Their values, pride, and dignity are shaped by community and extended family. I've learned how families embrace music and dance and laughter and friendship in spite of the circumstances. They live life to the fullest while coping with adversity. People do indeed have the ability to rise above and meet their challenges, even when some may seem insurmountable. With the leadership of the elders, the wisdom of the ancestors, and the optimism of youth, Africans are working together to create a brighter future. Never underestimate the power of the human spirit. Yeah.